Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Maria Sotolongo with CW39 Houston. We're interrupting your regularly scheduled program to track Tropical Storm Beta. Galveston County Judge Mark Henry is holding a press conference right now to provide the latest updates on the storm. Let's go ahead and listen in. We have seen a, a suspension of the service, the ferry service to Bolivar Peninsula. We have also seen water over Highway 87 exactly as we had forecast it would. We are not to the worst of it yet. That's one thing I do want to, to point out to everyone. Our anticipated worst water over the road will be tomorrow morning at high tide, approximately 5.59 a.m. So right around 6 a.m. we will see a combination of the surge, a combination of the freshwater rain, and a combination of the high tide, which could give us as much as three to four feet over the road. So that's pretty significant. That's what we were concerned about. That's why we asked people to go ahead and leave if uh, that was going to be a problem. Hopefully they've done that. Uh, with a s ferry service suspended before that happened, we were able to place 12 additional sheriff's deputies on Bolivar Peninsula as well as TxDOT and road and, bridge brews, road and bridge crews. TxDOT is actually sheltering in a county facility on Bolivar, so they are there. The minute they're able to get back to work, they'll be there and ready to go. Uh, we have voluntary evacuations for Galveston west of the seawall, Dickinson and low-lying areas, Lamarck outside of the levee system, Jamaica Beach, which has already experienced some pretty significant flooding, the city of Kima, uh, Hitchcock is anticipating a voluntary evacuation this afternoon, Tiki Island has a voluntary evacuation, Bayou Vista has a voluntary evacuation. We have got high water uh, rescue assets located all around the county. Santa Fe being the highest part of the county is uh, probably the most precautious area, but here, uh, in Bolivar, San Leon, Bay Cliff, so we really have them everywhere that they could possibly be needed and able to respond quickly. We have a couple of uh, school districts are going to make calls later on today about whether they intend to have class tomorrow. So I have kids in Clear Creek ISD and I got a text saying they'll make a call by 7 p.m. this evening. With that in mind, uh, the rest of the track of Tropical Storm Beta remains about the same. It is going to go further inland than had originally anticipated but the track as far as the timing and the speed is, remains relatively unchanged. We again expect it to be out of here by Wednesday. So we're looking at the next couple of days with as much as 15 inches of rain along the coastline. Those numbers trail off as you go further inland. Uh, again, nothing like Harvey where we had 50, 50 to 55 inches of rain in 48 hours. Also, the ground is dry. I was planning on issuing a burn ban tomorrow. I feel pretty comfortable that won't be necessary now. So the water uh, will be absorbed at a, at a fairly good rate because of how dry everything is. And we're, again, expecting at the most 15 inches. So exact same as yesterday, the coastal surge combined with the freshwater rain, combined with the inability for those waters to recede are our greatest concerns. But it looks like it'll be terribly inconvenient. We don't see threats to life safety at this time. Uh, any questions? Judge, uh, the rain totals, they've been fluctuating back and forth. Can you say the latest update you got? Because yes. between 5 and 10 this morning, Correct. Have changed. So. And that's why they talk about the low confidence in their forecast yesterday. They had downgraded it from 15 probable to 15 potential. We're back up to 15 probable. But again, it's just along the coastline. Uh, as you go inland up to the north side of Houston, down to two and three inches. So very heavy along the coastline, not that much going inland. And that's over a two to three days. That's period. over a two-day period. That's that's the duration of the storm, not in the next 24 hours. Uh, the other the track now, if you follow the center line, obviously this is a wide cove, right. this close in to a landfall move, uh, does put it up more kind of the west side of Houston, then going northward, keeps this area on that wet. Correct. We call the wet side the whole time. Correct. You concern though now is that is some of that's shifted more offshore and more inland uh, at all? Well, the good news is we took the precautions we thought necessary should something like this happen. So we're as prepared as we would be if this had been the forecast all along with uh, the voluntary evacuations, the pre-positioning of assets, and the search and rescue assets available. So everything is exactly what we have done with the worst case scenario. Up on the Galveston Bay side, the, the forecasters are looking at a lower tide, like an eagle point stuff that they right. were looking at yesterday. Is that still the same information you've got? Yes. Uh, so uh, tidal activity everywhere is going to be increased. Uh, and again, it's because the, the water cannot recede back into the Gulf of Mexico. It won't have the ability. Just out of curiosity, um, it is voluntary. Do you have uh, an estimate of how many people actually have left? We don't. On volunteers, we don't really use our law enforcement to go check door to door. We do on mandatories, but that's not the case here. So we've got uh, plenty of people who feel they can handle 24, 48 hours without 
uh, being able to get in their car and drive around. If they want to stay, that's absolutely fine. We have the additional law enforcement there to protect the private property of those people who do decide to leave. About 8 o'clock last night, Textile, when they shut down the ferry going from Galveston to Bolivar, they kept it open. Correct, from Bolivar to Galveston. Is that mostly right. folks not who live on the, on the peninsula, but maybe had just visited? For that we, we would assume it was uh, weekenders, vacationers, but we don't poll those people, so we don't really know where they are coming from or going to. I do think that was a great call on the part of TxDOT to shut down one direction, two, but to keep the direction coming back uh, open and, and business until this morning sometime. Approximately how many officers are actually going to stay on the island? We have 12 additional officers. A typical shift, as I understand it, is probably four to six. So we are looking close to 20 sheriff's deputies alone. We also have deputy constables over there. So as far as a per capita ratio goes, we have a very good per capita ratio. Those guys will be there. Again, we're asking you in some cases to leave your private property. We're also going to put the assets in place to protect your private property while you're gone. Uh, on 87, is it impassable anywhere or just water over the road at this point? So it, it has been impassable at points. It is not impassable at my 30 minute ago briefing, but at points it has been. And yes, there's definitely debris across the road. That's why Road and Bridge and TxDOT have staged their assets over there to get it removed as soon as the rain and the surf stops. Now, I know it's voluntary, but what would you like to say to the public about safety and what they need to do? Stay out of the water. Uh, if you have chosen to stay in your home on Bolivar, stay inside. There's nothing to see. You can watch it all on Facebook uh, and just stay in your house. Don't get in the car. It is very deceiving when you see water and to know how deep it is. So don't try it. Uh, just, just stay where you are. Stay put. If you need something, you can call 911. We will do our best if it's an emergency, of course. We'll do our best to respond. There will be times when we can't respond, though, and that's part of, I think, why we call for voluntary evacuations. So one thing, uh, one of the assets over there, was there an a couple ambulances also taken over there that are not normally stationed? That is work. unknown to me. I'm not aware of additional ambulances. We normally have them over there anyway. I'm not aware of additional ambulances. They'd have a hard time traversing just right. like a, a car would. Anything else? Uh, for Fox Wing, uh, what's the biggest concern right now? Uh, I guess the biggest concern is people wanting to go out and drive around and look at things. So just, again, like I said, just stay where you are. There's nothing really to see that you can't see on the television or on Facebook or somewhere else. Don't get out. Don't become a problem for us when you're not a problem right now. And do you anticipate any more evacuations? I do not. Uh, based on the forecast that I just got minutes ago, the uh, what we have done is adequate preparation for the worst case forecast that they're giving me. So there's nothing that I believe additionally will come from the county. Individual cities can do what they want. And other than 87, is there any other roads that have got high water spots on right now? Uh, yes, Jamaica Beach has got street flooding, and we can expect surface flooding in all the usual spots. So low-lying areas along the coast, Bay Cliff, San Leon, Freddysville, uh, City of Galveston. So all the places that would flood in a really severe thunderstorm are likely going to flood to this time for more than just a few minutes, though. You've got bigger things to worry about just because tomorrow would be normally a business day. Any county operations going to be closed early or not? Not, not yet. The forecast has being able to get to work being okay. So we're going to tell our employees to go ahead and plan on coming to work. We will monitor the rain when it starts. And if we can't assure you're getting home safely at 5 o'clock, we'll have an early release tomorrow afternoon. We had commissioner's court planned for 9.30 in the morning. I will be doing it from here virtually. Uh, I think we're trying to get other commissioners to see if they want to, to you know, go in person or do it virtually as well. Is it more of a, we're looking at a 5 o'clock on, like a Monday? Pro probably noon, noon, on. noon on. Yeah, noon on, Monday but Friday. how much accumulation and flooding do we see between noon and 5 p.m.? Right. Is there any concern for damage to property or businesses? Uh, you, we can expect some damage to property. I just saw that one of the piers on a uh, one of the pilings on a pier uh, was knocked out. Which, from what little tidal activity we have so far, that seems like it was in pretty bad shape to start with. So we can expect some structural damage, but we would hope that people are not in those structures and are away and and have sought safety. You had mentioned yesterday too, particularly <coughs> on Bobber Peninsula, the dunes gone, mostly gone. Dunes yes, most gone, uh, and already we're playing with well. What, I mean, after you get out of all of this, so that after you have this situation, what's it going to take to get a replenishment program going over on the peninsula, you think? That's a very good question. <laughs> we would like to see if it's going to be a state-run effort or a federally-run effort. It's probably going to be the state, but uh, that's way down the road. We're, we're trying to make sure we get to Wednesday morning with nobody hurt <laughs> before we start working on that. And if you haven't noticed, we have another disturbance that's off the coast of Florida already, so we get no breaks here. We'll be right back here doing the exact same thing for the uh, at least as far as monitoring and preparation for that storm as well.
So you're saying we should just go ahead and check in? I might as well just go ahead and check in. We'll get you a key and yeah, the showers are up on the third floor. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. See ya.